Hello and welcome to the first video for assembling the Intellisaurus robot. Um, this first video, all we're going to do is assemble these pieces I have right here. Through the magic of video, we're going to roll back and I'm going to show you how to put together these basic frame parts. Just mounting the motors, putting together the frame. I assume you have downloaded the DXF files and cut on your favorite laser cutter. The whole design is, is made to be cut out of three millimeter um, acrylic, um, also called often one eight inch acrylic. Um, the distinction is sort of non-specific. So you really want to put a pair of calipers on your plastic and see how thick it is. The rain, it just varies by manufacturer and varies quite a bit. And you want something as close to three millimeters as possible because the width of these little holes here I have measured to be three millimeters. Um, if you're slightly under 2.85 or 2.9, that's great. Um, if you're slightly over 3.12 or whatever, it might not actually fit in there. So um, it's close to 3 mil or slightly under. If you're down around 2.7, it's going to be sloppy and not fit right. Um, so try and find yourself a thicker piece. So I've laid out here the various pieces that are already laser cut. The first thing to do is to peel the paper off of all of them. I have chosen clear acrylic, as you can see. The robot behind me, I used um, black acrylic for the main body parts. You can use whatever color acrylic you want for the body parts. I do think the stand looks best in clear. So I'm gonna assemble the stand first. It's got these etch marks in it that you wanna be able to see pretty clearly, and we'll get to that later. Um, and I just think a clear stand looks better, but it really can be any color you want. So to assemble the stand, um, this is sort of a old technique where we use bolts and nuts to, to assemble the pieces together. They sort of fit in the slots, um, but then in these T-spaces, some little um, bolts and nuts hold it together. These are M3 by, 50, by 10 mils. Um, everything in this project is um, millimeters as opposed to inches because I find it easier to source anywhere in the world. Um, and you can still get metric stuff in the U.S., particularly in these small sizes. So that's an M3 by 10 long. Um, you need about 50 of them uh, to assemble the whole robot, and most of them are for the, the stand part. These are M3 bolts that we're putting it together with. And screw it in. It holds it tight. Now you don't want to pull this too tight because you'll end up cracking the acrylic. Then the nut will pull here and crack this little bit right there. Um, we tried various techniques to prevent that. The best one is just don't crank it too tight. I find it easier to use a little blue tape to uh, hold these nuts in and then do them all at once. You could do these one at a time. There's lots of different techniques, but I'll show you my favorite. Some of these little snug. And then I hold the, the nut in place with blue tape. It's not as critical in this stand, it's just kind of square, but um, when you get into the more complicated robot parts where it's hard to reach all these little nuts, this technique pays off. All right, so we're gonna put the stand together. Um, the most important thing for the stand is to make sure that your etching is on the outside, right? These pieces are actually symmetrical. It's easiest to keep the blue tape on the outside where I can get it off easy later. Um, so I fitted the stand together. And remember, the etching is on the outside. Um, it looks sort of a mirror of each other. And then I can just put the bolts in. All right, so now I've got the stand together. I can pull the little bits of blue tape off. And now we're gonna move on to the main body. The main body comes in two sides. Um, and remember, again, this also has etching on it. Can we see that in the camera? Mm -hmm. The etching should go on the outside. 
an easy way to remember is it's also got these little numbers. So if I face the camera, these numbers should be readable, right, on the outside of the robot. And the two sides are symmetrical, so they fit together um, like that. Um, before you start assembling, you probably wanted to glue. There's this extra little piece here that you can see is sort of an extra layer that I just glue on top. Um, it makes that spot a little thicker. All right. Here's another one, the other one on the other side. Um, you can use whatever glue you like for acrylic. I tend to use a two-part plastic glue. So the first thing we're going to do as opposed to um, assemble the, the robot together, we're gonna um, attach most of our pieces to the body parts before we put the body together. So all of your um, larger servos generally come with a package that looks something like this. We're not gonna use everything in this package, but since I'm gonna open this package in the beginning, I'm gonna pull everything I need out for our robot just one time, um, so I don't have to keep coming back to this package. You can do this however you like. We're gonna need the round servo horn, we're gonna need um, the little rubber grommets. Should be four of those. And we're actually gonna use these um, self-tapping screws, but we're gonna use those on the body. It's just a way to save screws. We're not gonna use those on the horn. We're gonna use those on the body. So these are the only parts we're actually gonna use on the robot, so I'm gonna pull them all out now. Um, these other horns, oh, sorry, the actual mounting screw for the, for the, um, the servo as well. These other horns, you can save them for later projects. These are MG966 servos. Um, I'll put the specs are, are on the website and all of that for the servo. Um, they come in, they feed in from the front side and sit like that, right? Now, you're gonna mount the servo with these same M3 by 10 bolts with the same nuts, right? Now, I've already put on, to save time, these little rubber grommets. I'm gonna pop one off real quick. These come in the servo pouch. So you're gonna dig through each servo and pull out four of these. Is that on camera? Four of these for each uh, servo, and go ahead and pop them in. The edges. All right, and so then we feed the wire through from the outside. The, um, so we're feeding in from the outside. On all of these, on both sides, the actual um, uh, uh, mount point is up as opposed to down. Right. So now I'm gonna put all of these in there. At this point, it doesn't matter which one. We'll come back to labeling them in a second. I'm just gonna mount all eight of these primary motors. These are our primary leg motors. They drive the legs. So I've got all um, eight of the main motors mounted on the, the main body parts. Just double check, you've got the motors sort of mounted on the outside of the frame. You can read the numbers from the outside, right? So that's how you know that this is the outside. It doesn't mount that way, it mounts this way. Um, and you've mounted all eight of them that way correctly. All right, and on there pretty snug. Next, we're gonna mount the other motors. There are 11 motors in this robot total. The first thing we're gonna assemble is the neck. The neck um, uses these two little pieces here. You just have to recognize them, right? They're, they're similar. They go on top of each other, and one has a hole in it, right? You can see those holes go straight through and line up. And this motor mounts opposite direction, like this. So it's kind of hard to see. Just got to make sure yours matches in the same way that mine are done, right? The two plates go on top of each other and mount like that. Then I've got M3s by 50 millimeters. Kind of hard to find, I had to order them online. 
Um, you might be able to get them in an Ace Hardware store. Um, should fit all the way up and through. And then I can put my nylon bolt on top. And I'm just going to do this for all six bolts. All right, a couple of things to note about this assembly. Um, I have put the bolt heads on the bottom near this uh, uh, mount. It's going to mount this way. Uh, it's just because I know I have all the space. I, the heads take a little bit less space against the robot. There's plenty of space on the top, so I've put the nuts coming up high. The second thing is when um, I, as I assembled this, I did it kind of loosely because the two motors, I've rotated them. They're not exactly the same dimension in both, both dimensions. And so I want to tighten this side down first. All right. So now I've made this side here tight because it's the longer side. And now I'm going to come over and tighten these others down. What's going to end up happening is I will bend this acrylic a little bit, and that's okay. It'll get a little more snug. All right. Um, I I think you you could probably crack these if you tighten those two bolts down. You know, really cranked them down. You could probably crack this acrylic, but my guess is you don't have to worry too much about that. All right. I've also just kind of made sure that my mount is centered in this hole down here before I tighten it up good. Then I'm going to grab each nut with the trusty needle nose and uh, give it a good tighten. All right, so that is the neck mount. All right, I'm going to set that aside for a second. And we have one little motor. Um, this is for the tail. I'm going to mount it to the tail piece, which looks like this. Just got to know it by, um, by looks. Um, the curved part is towards the back of the robot. So I'm going to feed the, um, the, um, the wire up through the bottom, and it mounts sort of upside down like this. The, um, the motor mounts uh, towards the back of the robot, right? As opposed to, sort of, as opposed to doing it that way, I want to mount it this way. Right. And it's a little tight to get in there because of the wire, and I can't go in straight, but I just kind of work it till it gets in there. There we go. So now it's in there. Um, this horn I just already have on there. You don't have to have it on there. I just, it's the only horn for this size motor, so I don't like to lose it, so I put it on there early. These are two millimeter bolts by 12 millimeters long, M2 by 12. We use M2s by 12s quite a bit on this robot. There's basically, um, I tried to keep the number type of bolts to a minimum. There's M2s and M3s. All right, so that's on there. Again, I'm gonna grab that with my needle nose and tighten these little bolts down. So this guy is mounted. That's what the, it'll end up looking like that when it's in the robot, um, and that's the tail. Okay, I'm gonna mount one more piece for this video, and that is the horn for this neck piece. There's several pieces that are easier to mount before we assemble the robot, and so I wanna uh, mount those now. Um, you can see that there's mounting holes for the, uh, a typical circular horn already cut in this, this acrylic. So we're going to grab a circular horn and uh, mount it in there. All right, so I've got my um, circular horn, and I've got um, M2 by 6 um, millimeter bolts. These are the M2 by 13s we use elsewhere, and a bunch of M2 nuts. So we're just going to mount this on here. Um, we need to know where the front is, so I'm just going to take this real quick. Hold it up, right? So just for reference, the front of the robot is um, is the part without the T. So it looks like that, right? So the only reason I need to know where the front of the robot is, so now I know that this is the top. I'm gonna mount that baby right on top. 
by screwing in from the bottom with these M2 screws. Now I'm going to use these M2 bolts to self-tap as opposed to the, the other self-tapping ones. It's a little bit harder. They also stay better. So I'm forcing, forcing this in and tapping the plastic with it. That's why I'm squeezing so tight because it's tapping into the plastic. So that bolt has come through. There's enough space for a nut on top of there. If you really didn't want it self-tap, that was just too hard. You could drill these holes out and then put a little M2 nut on top of there. Um, I would actually put, in that case, some blue Loctite just to make sure it stayed on there because uh, that's something that would rattle off. I tend to use the plastic. Self-tapping the plastic, it doesn't unrattle. All right, so my horn is mounted on here. I can see my uh, six mil M2 bolts are poking through the plastic really good. It's nice and secure and tight on there. Um, so when we're ready to mount the motors, it'll mount really well. Next time we will mount electronics onto the frame pieces, start wiring some of those together, and then actually assemble the frame together.